Disney at one time was planning on a Beauty and the Beast prequel, starring Gaston and LeFou. But at the beginning of 2022, it looks like the show will never come to pass. And even though the phrase Disney live action remake now usually ends up being a cash grab, there was a time when Disney remakes turned out well. And in my opinion, a guest on remake could have and would have been far better than the Beauty and the Beast live action movie we ended up getting. So, welcome to, on the other hand, where I'd like to go over a remake that could have been, entitled Guest On. Keep in mind, I'm no screenwriter, or writer of any kind. This is just an idea inspired by Disney's Maleficent, where they are able to tell a new and compelling story from a different perspective, and make a literal devil of a fairy tale sympathetic. So why not do the same for Guest On? The first scene of this remake is in the tavern, where Maurice, Belle's father, is just finishing telling the story of Beauty and the Beast to a group that is passing through the town. And it is obviously the version in the original animated movie. Maurice finishes his drink and heads out of the tavern while the people at the table he just left start to discuss the magical tale. Someone comments on how nice Maurice was, and they can't imagine why the townspeople threw him out just when he needed their help the most. That's when a voice speaks up from the table over. He scoffs and says that nobody threw Maurice out that night. Someone else at the table retorts, What, were you there too? The man stands up, and while he takes an overly dramatic bow, says, Yes, yes I was. LeFou at your service. Someone else at the table pipes up, So why should we believe Gaston's right-hand man to say what happened? LeFou smiles wanly, as if this is a regular question in response. Am I less reliable than an old man who told you he was on the brink of being put into the asylum? What's more plausible, that the entire town was in on some conspiracy against the guy? Or that Maurice, whose sanity has always been so-so, at one time saw enemies everywhere he looked. The last person at the table responds, Well, the night is still young, and I'm down for another story. What do you say happened? LeFou looks appreciative for the invitation, as he takes a sip of his drink and looks into the distance as he starts to recount the village's history. I was a lad when the previous prince lived here. And the scene transforms to years gone by. LeFou explains that the prince mysteriously disappeared, along with all his family and servants one winter. No one knows what happened, but no one dared encroach upon the abandoned castle, as there would be severe punishment for those even perceived to be profiting from the absence of the crown. But as time passed, no one returned, and the country surrounding the village grew more wild without the hunting party sent out from the castle. One of the years, a pack of wolves started attacking outlying houses. They came to young LeFou's house one night. The rest of his family died, but Gaston rallied several men in the town, and they rescued him before the wolves killed him too. Gaston took LeFou in as a brother, and became the only real family LeFou had left. Gaston took LeFou on his hunting trips, and despite his attempts at training, LeFou was always terrified of beasts, but did what he could to help. Because LeFou never bagged animals himself and stayed by Gaston's side during hunts, people started calling him by the name he now goes by, LeFou. He didn't mind too much. Gaston was a good friend, and that's what mattered. The next winter was a really hard one. Food was in very short supply. Gaston saved the town that winter with his hunting expertise. They would have starved if not for Gaston's actions. After that, every girl in town wanted to marry Gaston. He was a strong natural town leader who guaranteed they'd never go hungry and would always be taken care of. But Gaston wasn't comfortable with how much he was pursued. He didn't know what to do with all the attention, and he didn't want someone who would just fawn over him for his reputation. He wanted to find a wife who would know and love him for who he was. Because he didn't know what to do with all the attention, and because he was so good at hunting, Gaston spent most of his time out in the forest, so he never really had opportunities to improve his relatively poor social skills. Not many people moved into or out of the town, so it was noteworthy when Belle and Maurice moved into the town after that hardest winter. They didn't seem to understand the town's respect for Gaston. Gaston continued to contribute to the town with his skills, but the worst of the winters had passed, and people weren't in need like they had been. Maurice had plenty of money to sustain Bo and himself while he tinkered in his shop, even though he never seemed to sell anything to the town or the occasional traveling merchants. In fact, his inventions never worked like he said they would. He was always rambling about what contraption he was working on, and on the occasions where he tried to show off his work, things either didn't do anything or failed spectacularly. Over time, his inventions were mocked and kind of became the joke of the town, so the father and daughter pair kept to themselves. Regardless of what people said about them, though, Gaston was smitten with Belle. He made several attempts at subtly flirting, but failed miserably. He was wise in the ways of tracking game and understanding the lay of the physical land, but social cues and maneuvers were widely lost on him. LeFou narrates, You know how it is. In the city, there might be extensive courting. But here, there's little time for socializing, especially for the town hunter. So Gaston figured a more direct approach might work for Belle. I was there when Gaston tried to propose to Belle. It didn't go anything like Maurice said. Heck, as usual, Maurice didn't even claim he was there. He just expects people to believe him and not ask too many questions. 
Anyway, Gaston knocked on the door, and I waited outside the window and heard the whole scene. Belle came to the door and said, Gaston, what a pleasant surprise. Gaston replied, Is it? I, I'm just full of surprises. Y you know, Belle, there's not a girl in town who wouldn't love to be in your shoes. This is the day... Uh, this is the day your dreams come true. What do you know about my dreams, Gaston? Well, picture this. a uh, rustic hunting lodge, my latest kill roasting on the fire, and my wife and I watching the little ones play with the dogs. We'll have six or seven? Dogs? Nobel, uh, strapping boys like me? Imagine that. And you know who that wife could be? Let me think. You, Belle? Gaston, I'm speechless. I really don't know what to say. Say you'll marry me? I'm very sorry, Gaston, but I just don't deserve you. The Foo continues narrating. When Gaston came out of the house, he looked like a deer who had just got ambushed by a hunter. He had no clue what had just happened. I explained that she seemed to have been teasing him, and after he understood that, he went away for a day or two on a solo hunt. When he came back, he was still determined to try and win her over. Weeks went by, and Maurice and Belle hadn't come into town in all that time, and Gaston had stuck to hunting and brooding at the tavern. He wanted another shot, but because they had seemingly gone away for a trip, Gaston didn't know how or what to do to move forward. People in the tavern could tell something was bugging Gaston, but nothing seemed to help. Then one night, during an especially bad snowstorm, Maurice barged in the tavern. He started raving about a beast who had captured Belle. Gaston pulled Maurice aside and tried to get a description and offer his help. Maurice seemed open to the help, even though we didn't really know what to make of his antics. Gaston wanted to go get the asylum manager to see what he thought of Maurice. He wasn't acting normal, even for Maurice, and kept talking nonsense. So we left Maurice at the tavern, where he should have been safe, and on the way to get the asylum manager, Gaston talked about how this might be the chance to show Belle he could do more than just hunt. He could look after her father, despite his tall tales, and keep him safe. We returned, and Maurice had slipped out of the tavern, and his tracks led home, and then out into the night. I volunteered to come back at least every night to see if either Maurice or Belle came back, so Gaston could offer them his help again. Days passed, and by that time word had spread about Maurice's antics. When they returned, I grabbed Gaston and the asylum manager, because everyone had heard of the crazy things Maurice had said. Many people came along to hear the ravings for themselves. Gaston didn't invite them, but they came all the same. In the tavern, one of the listeners asked LeFou, So you saw the magic mirror then? I said Maurice's inventions never seemed to work, but whatever invention this was, it made lights and sounds that at the time seemed to look an awful lot like the beast he described. People have since called it a magic mirror, but the thing is, no one has seen that magic mirror since. I'm convinced it was the only one of Maurice's inventions that he got working, even if it was a one-time thing. The people who saw it got riled up. They remembered the wolf attacks only a few years ago and did not want any possibility of something bigger coming after people. Gaston, trying to show confidence in Maurice and Belle's story, volunteered to lead a contingent of men to this beast in his lair. Gaston didn't want Maurice to go wandering off in the night again, so he asked if Belle would stay home with Maurice and watch over him, and she agreed. We went to where they described as the beast's lair, and it turns out it was the old castle of the noble who lived here before. We had assumed that another more private noble would have come someday to occupy the place, but the castle still seemed deserted, which only made the people more anxious and they started speculating that the beast had killed the noble all those years ago. Some even said that the beast was the old prince transformed. The castle had all sorts of pitfalls, some of which people thought were intentional traps put in place. For example, there were pieces of furniture that fell down from the higher floors while we were there, and one person claimed he saw a fire in the kitchen that flared up as they entered, but nobody else saw it. Many got injured in the deteriorating castle, and they turned back in groups each time this happened. Eventually, it was just me and Gaston, who wanted to fully investigate everything for Belle's sake. As we got to the tallest tower, we found him. The beast was real. I never got a good look at the creature, but I think he was a bear or a large wolf. Gaston fought him off as he tried to run away, but then Belle of all people showed up, running towards the beast and babbling about how kind and generous the beast was. Gaston dragged Belle and me out to the balcony and tried to hide from the beast, but he found us. Gaston ran towards the edge as a distraction and seemed to get a lethal hit on the beast's side with a knife, but the beast pushed Gaston over the edge. I told Belle to follow me, so we could go try and help Gaston, but after only a couple of rooms working our way back to the entrance, she split off and went a different direction. I found Gaston's weapons scattered around the edge of a river that passed by the castle. 
We never found his body. I searched all night, and the next day other villagers searched with me, but we just never found him. We did find a pool of blood from the beast, and the blood led down into the castle and then abruptly stopped. We never found him, but there's no way the beast could have lived after losing that much blood. No one saw Belle or Maurice for several weeks as well. They seemingly disappeared. The whole town turned out for Gaston's funeral, and Belle and Maurice were the only ones who didn't come to pay their respects. Not too long after, though, a new nobleman and servants came and fixed up the castle. The whole village was invited to a wedding of Belle and this new prince. I guess that's what they disappeared to, and maybe why they had so much money to live nicely without any of Maurice's devices ever working. The prince has brought more stability to this and several other towns in the area, and for that, I'm grateful. But Belle hasn't come back to the town since her marriage. The most we get is Maurice, who comes in and tells his magical story of how his daughter married the prince. LeFou finishes his tale and gets thanked for the account of events. He pays his tab and walks out of the tavern, and you can hear the traveler start discussing which version of the story they thought was more believable. The camera follows LeFou as he walks through the cold, and he turns into a home not too far away, with a warm light coming through the window. He walks in and is greeted by his wife. They embrace. Then they look fondly onto the scene of several kids playing with a couple of dogs, while Kill roasts on the fire. Roll credits. That's the end of my remake. I realize I'm no storyteller, and the dialogue and storyboarding of this could greatly be expanded upon and improved. But I do want to thank my brother, who spent a whole lot of time using text-based AI image generation to get the visuals for this video. Anyway, I love the idea of taking the proposal scene from the original animated movie and trying to use it as close to word for word as possible, yet with a much different tone and context. I also really had fun with the idea of the story being told two different times by two biased and unreliable narrators, leaving the audience to decide which part of the story was the truth. So, tell me what you thought of this retelling in the comments. I'd love to hear your other improvements or cool things that could have been done with such a remake. As always, thanks. Hope you enjoyed. And if you did, consider subscribing or joining me on Odyssey or Rumble, both great YouTube alternatives. Links are in the description.